Good day, good day everyone and once again we're back together. Alright, so we are looking at probability again, alright, in preparation for those exams. So if you haven't subscribed, please just make sure you're part of the family. Alright, let's have a look at this question quickly. So they say a bag contains a blue, uh, three blue marbles and uh, two red marbles, right? They say marble is taken from the bag. Um, the color is recorded and the marble is put aside. So note, we don't uh, replace the marble. And they say a second marble is taken from the bag and the color is recorded and then put aside again. Right, so they want us to draw a tree diagram to represent the information above. Show the possibilities associated with each branch uh, as well as the possible outcomes. All right, so... All right, so we know that we're dealing with a situation where we are not replacing, right? So we had blue marbles as well as red marbles. So let's start with that. So we're going to say, right, so we've got two red marbles, okay? And we've got uh, blue marbles as well, right? So we've got three blue marbles, so we've got a total of five, right? Now, firstly, what is the probability of us picking a blue marble, right? So we've got three out of five. So the probability of picking a blue marble uh, is three out of five, right? So this is in the first pick, right? Now, uh, in this case, on condition that we picked a blue marble in the first pick, so which means we now have one less blue marble, right? Now, on the second pick, remember we did not replace, right? What is the probability of picking another blue marble in the second pick, right? So now you've got two out of the four, so that means the probability of picking blue again, right? would actually now be 2 over 4, right? So which means the outcome of the first pick would be, uh, would affect our second pick in this case. So which means that uh, these are not independent events, right? So what would be the probability if we picked a blue ball or a blue marble in the first instance, right? what would then be the probability of picking a red marble, right? On condition that we pick blue the first time, right? You've got two red marbles out of the four, so the probability would be two over four. Uh, we can even say it is one over two, right? So that would be equal to one over two, right? So in this case, that is what our first, um, you know, scenario looks like. Now, Let's consider a scenario where in the first instance, we are going to pick a blue marble instead of the red, right? So let's go back to the first scenario where we are picking now. Now, what is the probability of picking a red marble, right? You can see the probability of picking red. Oh, sorry. Actually, we had, uh, sorry, two red and three blue right? So this is what we had in the first instance. So what would be the probability of picking a red marble? So the probability of picking red, okay, let me write it in red there. Okay, so the probability of picking red, um, okay, so the probability of picking the red would be equal to, there are two red marbles, out of the five right so now if we have picked a red marble so that means that we will have four marbles left and uh, one red and three blue so therefore what would be the probability of picking red again in that instance right so the probability of picking red again we would have one that is left out of four balls so the probability of picking red again would be one over four right so now what would be the probability of picking blue on condition that i picked red on the first one 
so the probability of picking blue remember we've got three blue balls or three blue marbles that are left right and out of the four so in this case it would definitely be three over four so we've got a scenario here where we've got blue and blue right uh, here we've got blue and red okay and here we've got red so we picked red first then blue and of course in the final one we've got a scenario where we picked red then red okay right i hope you can see all of that so that is how we would uh, we would construct a tree diagram right so now they say to us calculate the probability of first taking a red marble and then taking a blue marble in that order so we are very specific right first taking the red then taking the blue marble so which one is that so it's definitely this one over here right so we want the probability that we will first pick the red then pick the blue right so the probability that we might pick red then blue this would be the probability of picking red multiplied by the probability of picking the blue right so what is our red in this case we've got 2 over 5 right multiplied by the probability of picking uh, the blue which is 3 over 4 and in this case we've got 6 over 20 or if you want to uh, in this case right you would say this would be 3 over 10 okay right so uh, that is how we would calculate that probability right this is uh, uh, question 8.1.2 right so that's 8.1.2 and this one was 8.1.1 right i hope we're still following right then in the next question they say a and b are two events right the probability that each event or, or rather that event a rather will occur is 0 0.4 and the probability that event b will occur is 0 0.3 so what they're doing is they're giving us uh, this is 8.2 right so the probability of a that's 0 0.4 and the probability of b occurring is 0 0.3 right so the rest of the information they say the probability that either event A or event B will occur is 0 0.858. Uh, so the probability of A or event B will be 0 0.58, right? Now, they want us to um, uh, calculate. They say, are the events uh, A and B mutually exclusive? Justify your answer with the appropriate calculation. Now, I want you to remember, ladies and gents, when we're talking about mutually exclusive event, you know, in the case of a Venn diagram, if we were to demonstrate that. So this, these are the events whereby there is no intersection. So there's no part where the two um, events would intersect, you know, something like that, right? So in this case, what are we looking at? We are looking at two events where the probability of a and b would be equal to zero so in order for us to prove that um you know the events are mutually exclusive we have to prove that a and b are equal to zero if this is not the case then the events are not mutually exclusive and please remember how we prove this we use our pr uh, probability uh, formula okay this is the formula of everything right so probability of a and b would be equal to the probability of a plus the probability of b minus the probability of a or b remember that you're given this formula right okay so let's look at it probability of a this was 0 0.4 probability of b 0 0.3 probability of a or b this is 0 0.58 right and notice in this case what do we get we get uh, 0 0.7 minus 0 0.58 and this will give us 0 
So, which means the probability of A and B is equal to 0 0.12. So, therefore, the events A and B are not mutually exclusive. Okay? And why is that? Uh, that's because the probability of A and B are not equal to zero. All right, I hope that you uh, understand that quite well. All right, now let's go to the next one. They say to us events, are other events A and B independent? And justify your answer with an appropriate calculation. Now remember, ladies and gents, in order for us to prove that events are independent, right? So for independent events, the probability of A right i want you to please remember this so the probability of a and b must be equal to the probability of a multiplied by the probability of b so if this is the case then we would uh, um you know we would conclude that the events are independent right now um, let's do this. Let's find out the two probabilities separately, right? So we're going to try and work this out, uh, you know, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So probability of A and B, we've already cal uh, calculated this. In the previous question, we found that this was 0 0.12. The probability of A is 0 0.4. The probability of B, 0 0.3. And the probability in this case, so if we multiply those two, 0 0.4 times 0 0.3, that will give us 0 0.12. Notice left-hand side is definitely equal to right-hand side. So therefore, it means that uh, A and B are independent events, right? Independent events. And why is that? because the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. And please remember, you'll always calculate this in the same way. Even if they give you a Venn diagram, remember that probability of A and B, right, will always be that intersection, okay? So A and B would be here, right? Probability of A or B Right, if you're given this is event A and this is B, the probability of A or B will be the union between the two events, right? So that is where you'd find that there. All right, so ladies and gents, I hope that probability, we are trying to make it as you know easy as possible, right? And I'll keep throwing these questions, all right, and uh, giving you... Uh, you know, approaches on how to answer them. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.